Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be learning about conical pendulums with uniform circular motion. You want to copy this down real quick, make sure to pause it and we'll continue. So let's look at this. Example number 12, a 1.45 kilogram ball is suspended from a string, from a 0.8 meter string and swings in a horizontal circle at a constant speed such that the string makes an angle of 14 degrees with the vertical. Draw a free body diagram of the mass. All right, let's draw a few things. This angle, 14 meters. The length, 0 0.8. Mass, 1.45 kilograms. Okay, free body diagram. So what we should know, there's going to be a force of gravity going down. Uh, we know that's going to be 14.5 newtons. And there's going to be a force of tension going along the wire like this. What is the tension in the string? Okay, let's see if we can figure this out. First, what we should know is this angle right here is going to be the same as this angle, 14 degrees. 14 degrees. The next thing, oh, let me get rid of this. So that's 14 degrees. That's the same angle, 14. Next thing we should know is the force of tension in the y direction should equal the force of gravity because these two are going to cancel out, cancel out with one another. So this is also 14.5 newtons. That way we can figure out what the force of tension is. We can do uh, cosine of 14 is equal to adjacent 14.5 divided by the hypotenuse for force of tension. And this way we can find what the force of tension is. We can do 14.5 divided by cosine of 14, and we get 14.94 newtons. Okay. Part B now says, what is the speed of the ball? So one thing we should know is as this thing is moving in a circle, there's going to be a force of tension in the x direction. And that's what's making it move in a circle, okay? The force of tension in the X is what allows it to move in the circle. So we should know force of tension in the X is equal to force centripetal. We can find what the force of tension in the X is. We could do 14.94 times sine of 14, and we get 3.62. So this is 3.62. And we should know this is going to be equal to mv squared over r. So m, 1.5 v, which we're looking for, the speed, over r. We don't know what r is, but we do know that the whole length of the string is 0.8 meters. So we can find what this radius is. The radius is going to equal the length of the string, 0.8, times, uh, times sine of 14. Okay, So we can do a little bit of trigonometry to figure out what this r is. So 0.8 times sine of 14. And we can see that the a radius of the circle is 0.19 meters. Don't get tricked, okay? The radius of the circle is not the length of the string this time. That's not the radius of the circle. So the r is going to be 0.19, oh, not squared, it's just 0.19, mv squared over r. So let's do a little bit of math and figure out what velocity is. 3.62 times 0.19 divided by 1.45 and the square root of that and we get 0 0.69 meters per second. Okay, we're gonna be doing a few more of these, so if that didn't make sense, continue to watch or go back and watch what you what didn't make sense, but do that. Okay, moving on. A 0 0.2 kilogram mass hangs from a string and forms a conical pendulum. The period of the pendulum in a perfect circle is 1.4 seconds, while the ball is traveling two meters per second. What is the angle? Okay, so we don't know what the angle is this time. You know, force of tension is up, force of gravity uh, is 2 newtons, okay? So one thing we do know, we do know that the force of um, tension in the Y is also 2 newtons. And remember, it cancels out with the force of gravity. And let's see if we can find what this force of tension in the X is, okay? So what we know is the force of tension in the x is going to be equal to mv squared over r. I think one of the problems is that we're not going to know what r is. However, we do know that the velocity is equal to 2 pi r over t. So let's see if we could use this to help find it. Velocity is equal to 2, 2 pi r, and we know the period makes a perfect circle 1.4 seconds. With that, let's see if we know what r is. So 2 times 1.4 divided by 2 pi, 
and we get r is equal to 0 0.45 meters. Now we can go back to this equation, force of tension in the x is equal to mass, 0.2, velocity, 2 squared, over r, 0.45. And now we can find this. 0.2 times 4 divided by 0.45, and we see this is 1.78 newtons. Okay? So now that we know this is 1.78, we can find this angle because we know this angle is exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do tan inverse. Tan inverse is equal to opposite 1.78 divided by adjacent 2, which will give me theta. And let's see what this is. Tan inverse 1.78 divided by 2, and we get 41.67 degrees. Okay. Um, next part is just asking for what is the force of tension, part B. And since we have this, we could just do Pythagorean theorem. 1.78 squared plus 2 squared and find the square root 2.68 newtons. Okay. I hope all of that made sense. We're going to be doing more, so but I hope this is starting to make more sense. All right, let's look at this. Mm-mm-mm. A point, a, a point 0.4 kilogram mass hangs from a string with a length of 0.9 meters from a conical pendulum. The period of the pendulum in a perfect circle is 1.4. What is the angle of the pendulum? Okay, so very similar question. Force of gravity equal to 4 newtons this time. We're looking for the angle one more time. We know force of tension the y again is also the same. It cancels out. We don't know what the force of tension the x is. We know that this angle is the same as this angle. So, let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, so again, we know the, oh, we don't know. Oh, this one's going to be a bit more tough, actually. So let's see if we can figure this out. We know force of tension in the x is equal to force centripetal. So we know force of tension in the x is equal to mv squared over r. So m, 0.4, v squared, uh, we don't know. R, we actually also don't know. We know the length of the string is 0.9, but we don't know what R is. So what we're going to do is, we should know velocity is equal to 2 pi R divided by the period. So we're going to substitute this velocity into there. So we're going to say force of tension X is equal to 0.4, and velocity, we're just going to substitute all this in, 2 pi R divided by T, all squared, divided by R. Let's see what this simplifies to. Force times x is equal to 0.4, and it's going to be equal to 4 pi squared, r squared, divided by r t, but we see that perfect circle 1.4 seconds. Oops. 1.4 seconds. 1.4 squared. So let's try to simplify this as much as possible. One thing we should know is that force of tension x is the same thing as a force of tension times sine of theta. So we can simplify this by just saying force of tension times sine of theta. And let's try to simplify all this. So I'm going to do 0.4 times 4 times pi squared divided by 1.4 squared. So I can see that this is going to be equal to 8.06. And then we have the radius still. But we should also know that the radius is right here, right? And then this is going to be equal to the hypotenuse, which is 0.9 times sine of theta. So I'm just going to change this r to be equal to 0.9 times sine of theta. Another thing we can see here is we have sine of theta on both sides, so these two can algebraically cancel out. So now let's find force tension, 8.06 times 0.9. And we get 7.25 newtons. Okay, so we found the force of tension. 7.25 newtons. But now, what's the force of tension in the x direction? Using Pythagorean theorem, we should be able to figure this out. Uh, we're going to do 7.25 squared minus 4 squared is going to give us this uh, square root of that. So 7.25 squared minus 4 squared and the square root of that 
And we get the force of tension in the x direction is 6.05 newtons. Knowing that, let's finally find the angle. We're going to do inverse tan. Inverse tan is equal to opposite 6.05 divided by adjacent 4. This will give us the theta. Tan inverse. 6.05 divided by 4, and that gives us 56 degrees. Okay. Alright guys, thanks for watching.